Have you ever just been playing Minecraft casually and then go on to pick something up, but then realize your inventory's a mess and full? Like, wow. Why do you think people build giant storage systems? Like, look at how many chests are here. Think of all the different items and item combinations that they could store here. But what if I did something different? What if I tried to beat Minecraft with the minimum amount of slots? As you can see, this is take seven. Yes, I've had seven attempts. This is a seed I use that I specially picked for reasons. And if you want the seed, I'll have a link to it in the description below. This is attempt number seven. All my runs have been able to make it to the nether. Only four of my runs have ever made it to the end. And of those four, only two have ever been completed. You're watching the shorter version. So instead of two hours of editing, I only have to do one. And it is also far more refined than the second attempt, which was, spoiler alert, the only other attempt thus far that has made it and completed the game. And here you see the main reason why I choose this seed. The blacksmith in the village right off spawn has three diamonds and four pieces of obsidian. That combined with later things in the seed, make this a very, very wanted thing to have in a challenge such as this. While I finish raiding the village, here are some ground rules for the challenge. Rule number one is that I have to complete the game while using the minimum amount of inventory slots. That means I have to cover up any inventory slot that I don't plan on using. The second rule is that chesting items or storing items inside of chests is not allowed except for ender pearls and beds where i'm able to have four slots allocated to them one being in the hot bar and three in the inventory instead of the usual one because they don't stack up to 64. if you want to see me do this while having to take into consideration that ender pearls and beds don't stack to 64 Leave a like on the video and subscribe. After taking out the villager's guard and using it to craft the final quintessential items to the run, I start making my way to the next point of interest. After making it to a nearby temple, I quickly mine through the floor on, and get to the treasure room and then quickly mine underneath the pressure plate to access the TNT. This is the second reason why I picked this seed. After quickly looking through the chests, I find what I'm looking for. Three extra diamonds. Using them, I craft a diamond pick to go along with my diamond axe and head along to where I'm going to be building my nether portal. After quickly setting off a TNT to collect sand to fill my inventory, I then make it to the place where I build my portal. After making it to my portal build site, and then mining a couple of blocks, I do what everyone refers to as a speed portal, where... well... Yeah, that. After a short stroll to a very nearby ruined nether portal, I grab the gold block it contained, as well as find the treasure chest, that contains 15 golden nuggets, 3 pieces of gold armor, and a flint and steel, which I will be using to get into the nether. After grabbing a quick bucket of lava, 
I light my portal and head into the nether. This is a, a rip part I originally practiced the most of, because it was just so confusing. I spawn in and run immediately towards the wolf's forest, collecting a couple of log blocks to convert into planks to get me some building blocks throughout the nether. From there, I make a short stroll over the nether, over the nether, <laughs> and pass by the fortress. We will be coming back here after we get fire resistance potions. It was only a short distance later where we find the Bastion, a major point in this run, and in most speedruns. After carefully making our way to the gold chalice that lies at the end of this bridge, we mine it all up, and steal all the peatlands gold. You know, I always wondered why speedruns don't grab this gold block right here. Yeah, it's for good reason. Every single pig in the entire bastion gets mad at you. And that kind of stuffs up the pig hole that we set up. And everyone hates you. Yeah. In fact, everyone hated me so much that they drove me out of their house and home and threatened to kill me and a brilliant run. However, I was fast, I was quick, and I was smart. You see, upon save and e saving and exiting a Minecraft world, and then re-entering it, you get about 3 seconds of invulnerability to all damage sources. Therefore, if you're falling from a dangerously high height, and save and exit right before you hit the ground, and log back in, when you hit the ground, nothing would have happened. You'll be safe. So I used that tactic right here to save myself from the piglins who drove me out of their home. After building and entering into their house, I quickly go and collect all the resources that the pigs had dro dropped for me. There was about two stacks of pearls, a couple of fire resistance potions which were exactly what I needed. And here you see the main reason why this challenge is so hard. Inventory management. Usually in speedruns you want to carry three things. Ender pearls, fire resistance, and string. On my first attempts, I hoped that I didn't have to grab the string. Later on, you'll see that I was right and I was lucky I didn't have to collect the string. However, we still need to grab the ender pearls for making the eyes of ender and the fire resistance to make sure that we don't die while collecting the blaze rods and sorting through all the mess with only one or two infantry slots instead of your usual four or five makes it so much harder to grab the thing you're looking for it just slows it down exponentially but luckily I'm able to grab everything that I need, including four fire resistance potions and two stacks of 16 ender pearls and a couple spare, which I use to get out of the bastion and head to our next point of interest, the Never Fortress. After quickly drinking a fire resistance, and again, accidentally withered by a wither skeleton, I start taking out the blazers one by one for all their blaze rods. And this didn't actually take that many blazers at all. And I just dropped my lava bucket to get some blocks to come up to the nether fortress. So I ended up dropping those blocks and picking up the blaze rods in that slot. After getting confused for a moment, forgetting where exactly I need to build my nether portal to escape, I quickly do it and come to the final part of this run. Or well, the second final part. The preparation for the end. As you can see, this is why I don't need to bring any string. I am able to get a village to spawn right on top of the stronghold, and village has free beds. I also spawn on top of a desert pyramid, like 
How cool is that? After quickly destroying every single bed in the village, I make my way into the desert temple, which leads to the stronghold. After looting this specific chest for the two enchanted golden apples, which I find is really, really rare and really, really lucky, I blow up the treasure room. It has nothing good for me inside of there, and the TNT will help me get down to the stronghold. Let's go. After digging into the stronghold, I quickly make my way into the portal room and set my spawn there and jump into the end for the final part of the video. And I'm not gonna lie, this end took 40 minutes. That's right, four times longer than the current video length. This alone took more than half of the time that I spent doing this entire getting to the end. This took 40 minutes and I'm not proud narrator. of it. Narr Let's see why it took options. 40 minutes, shall we? Narrator, off. After accidentally summoning the god that is the narrator, head towards the middle, the podium, where I set up for a bed one cycle. Obviously, since the end took me 40 minutes, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work, like I told you. So I had to resort to the old-fashioned way of blowing up the crystals. After an enderpearl nearly cost me my life and I was forced to eat my second golden apple, I was able to quite easily destroy all the other crystals. After that little adventure and a quick trip back to the overworld or two, I was then back to farming some enderpearls so I had a safe way to get me back down to the, uh, to the end surface without causing myself to die. And then it was just a waiting game, waiting for the ender dragon to perch enough time so I can stab it with my axe enough. So it dies. And then that was it. I had just beaten Minecraft using the nine slots in my hotbar and my offhand. And then that was it. I just toyed around in the end a little bit and relished in the fact that I just beat Minecraft with only 10 slots, which was an improvement on my second run, which used 11. Fun fact. If you want to see me upload both of those videos uncut, leave a comment and like the video. So that way, I know you guys like this content, and if you're new around here, maybe subscribe. I'm a small channel trying to grow, and who knows when I'll see you next time. But until then, why not watch some of my other great videos instead? I'll have a Minecraft playlist on the top left if you want to go watch some more Minecraft, or I'll have some Halo stuff in the top right if you want to watch some Halo and some of my other content. Have fun, guys. See you later. Bye.